Congressman Biggs and members in attendance, thank you for allowing me the opportunity this afternoon to tell my story. I especially want to thank all members of the House Judiciary Committee for the recent unanimous bipartisan support of new legislation protecting journalists from government overreach. These are important first steps. But as we face a government that in May of 2021 promised the seizure of journalist data is, quote, simply, simply wrong, unquote, and, quote, will not happen, while simultaneously actively seizing journalists' data, it is clear that the framework of journalist protection that relies upon the government to tell the truth, well, that framework is not enough. My home was raided by armed FBI agents in the pre-dawn hours of November 6, 2021. I was the third journalist at Project Veritas handcuffed um, that November. The FBI took off with 47 devices from our newsroom. The FBI wanted evidence of a crime related to a diary written by Ashley Biden containing allegations about what she described as, quote, probably inappropriate, unquote, behavior by her father, President Joe Biden. The diary and other items supposedly belonging to Ashley Biden were lawfully given to us by sources who had been in possession of those items before Project Veritas was ever even contacted by the sources. And we have a little video clip here of the raid. In short, we did nothing wrong other than the non-crime of investigating a story as journalists do. When we reached out to the Biden campaign for comment, Ashley Biden's attorney, a woman named Roberta Kaplan, responded by saying, quote, we should send to the Southern District of New York, unquote. In just 24 days, Ms. Kaplan got her political favor fulfilled when the Southern District of New York approved the first of 19 secret subpoenas, orders, and warrants, which gave the Department of Justice unfettered access to my and other reporters' newsroom email and phone data, complete with gag orders, preventing us from knowing about the seizures and doing anything about it, including at least two gag orders obtained behind the federal judge Annalisa Torres' back after she had granted our motion appointing a special master over the Department of Justice where she said it was to protect our, quote, journalistic privileges, unquote. The Department of Justice's actions are patently unconstitutional. So much so, the ACLU and the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press quickly denounced the Department of Justice's seizures. 200,000 of our newsroom's emails were seized. Numerous cell phones, 47 devices. Contrast that with this. To date, the special master has only deemed 355 documents potentially responsive. Yet even these 355 documents are protected under the freedom of the press, an argument the government called recently, quote, a newly invented privilege, unquote, and a, quote, novel theory. Let that sink in. The government even argued that in order to avoid disclosing our confidential journalist data, we must first disclose our confidential journalist data so the government can be satisfied that we are in fact innocent. This is directly in conflict with United States law. The Supreme Court ruled in 2001 in Bartnicki v. Vopper that we did that the mere receipt and eventual return of materials for innocent news gathering purposes is First Amendment protected activity, period. In the Project Veritas headquarters, there's a sign when you walk into our building. It says, this organization is protected by patriots. 
referring to the millions of Americans who support our work and afford us the ability to defend the right of journalists to report on stories critical of even the most powerful people and politicians in the world. But what of the unknown reporter? No one knows his name. His, his wages are printed words. The thirst for truth courses through his blood. He believes in the maxim, even if only one person listens to my investigative report, it's worth doing because the truth matters. We can, we must protect that person so that what happened to me never happens to him. One, I'm calling on all of you to create a Bartnicki hearing, a requirement that before subpoenas, warrants, or orders seeking to seize journalists' information can issue, the government must first give notice and a hearing to the journalist with the burden of proof resting squarely on the government to clearly and convincingly, the clear and convincing standard above the probable cause standard, prove the journalist in fact played a part in committing the crime being investigated, rather than requiring the journalist to prove with negative of innocence. Innocent until proven guilty, that concept is incompatible with probable cause against a journalist. Two, Codify the right of journalists to challenge any subpoena, warrant, or order seeking to seize data from a third party, where that data includes the journalist's information. No more secret seizures of journalist information, period. Three, fix the Privacy Protection Act and the 2703D process to provide for clear and meaningful damages to reporters who, like Project Veritas, have to spend millions in legal fees and legal bills to defend themselves from such egregious violations of the First Amendment. What steps you take now as members of Congress to protect freedom of the press are essential. By the time they come to your door with a battering ram, it's already too late. The violation of the Constitution are already too egregious. The battering ram was already at my door, but your work will save the unknown reporter so this never happens again on American soil. Thank you.